Hey yo, welcome to Learn with Jabe. I'm Jabe Jabelson, and this week we are going back to the well with more GPT-3. We are going to create a Codenames web app to help spy masters give clues with the help of OpenAI's GPT-3. This is not man versus machine, but rather manned and machine. This is a video tutorial, but if you want to go through these steps in more depth, you can find a link to my blog post in the description. Now, this app will help you succeed as a clue giver in the game of Codenames. Codenames is a great game to play at couples game night. The premise of the game is pretty straightforward. Two teams compete, each by having a spy master give one word clues that can point to multiple words on the board. The other players on the team attempt to guess their team's words while avoiding the words of the other team. You can play online as well, which may make it easier to fire up this helpful web app, but don't tell anybody. We are going to be borrowing from a nice GitHub repo from Shreya Shankar, who does all of the heavy lifting for us. Shreya, if you're out there, thank you so much. With her code, we'll be using Python and Flask plus React for the web front end. Now, you will need access to an API key from OpenAI to access GPT-3 in all of its glory. Good luck. And without further ado, bon appetit. Okay, as I mentioned before, we're gonna be using the GPT-3 sandbox from Shreya Shankar. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is in your projects folder or wherever you give birth to your side projects, uh, we're gonna to wanna to clone or fork the repository. So let's try and do this with the GitHub desktop app, which I've been using recently. It's been quite surprising. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so let's go ahead and clone that repository. Okay, and let's go into that folder we just created. And if we look at all of the list, the directory items, we see the GPT-3 sandbox. Okay, now what we're gonna wanna do first is create a virtual environment, which we'll do with python m vem vem. Let's run that. And then we're gonna activate that with source vem bin activate. Switch into that new environment we just created. Awesome. Now we're gonna to wanna to download our packages that we need with pip. And it's very easy to um, install packages with pip. Simply just write pip install package. So for us, let's do pip install open AI, which is one we'll need. And then let's pip install python.m, which is another one we'll need. And it looks like it's already installed. Now, since we were in the repo, since we downloaded the repo from Shreya, we actually have a document here with our requirements text that has all of the modules we need. So we can actually install this in another way without needing to pip install everything. So if we write uh, pip install dash r, then it's in the API folder requirements txt and we run that that will actually install all of the requirements that this cloned github requires and the last thing we need to do is install yarn which again um, i had to do via brew install yarn but you can also try the npm yarn install uh, npm is the pip equivalent for javascript if we need to run yarn install i will go ahead and take this and also add it back into an earlier piece. Okay, so next thing you need to do is head over to OpenAI, and we're gonna reveal our API key. Now, I had made a mistake previously of revealing this and not uh, reverting it or changing it, but what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and copy that, and let's actually go back to our GitHub desktop app, and let's open everything in Visual Studio Code. Okay, and so step one, is we're actually gonna create a new file. We're gonna go dot M. So note the, the leading dot, and this is gonna be just our local environment variable where we are going to put our open AI key. 
and we're going to set it equal to what we had just copied, which again, we're getting from OpenAI, and I'm going to no doubt about it, rotate this so no one can steal it and use up my credits. I had an unexpected $30 bill after publishing my last video. I have learned my lesson. So let's go ahead and save that. And I will say it one more time. We're using this .env, and again, we installed that python.env to host our local environment variables, which we will reference in the code itself. So let's head over to the OpenAI Playground to get a little more practice with what we're actually going to train GPT-3 to do. All right, so let's head over to our OpenAI Playground, which is really where we can get our hands dirty with GPT-3 in the model before we turn it into code. And what we're doing here is we're actually priming GPT-3 by giving it a few examples. Uh, so what we have here in code names is typically there are words, which we're referring to as answers, and the goal is to try and connect them with one word. So if the words on the board were trick, spells, wizard, enchanted, mystic, the spy master might give a clue of magic. Uh, so the, the teammates know to, to tap on trick, spells, wizards, uh, etc. Same goes for football, soccer, rugby, tennis. The one word clue might be sport. Now these are pretty... Uh, simple, right? We're trying to give GPT through some layup so it understands and learns from the pattern where eventually when I give this blank one with just thumb, forest, and color, we'll see what GPT-3 spits back. Now, the playground itself is the text where we're priming, but then we also have the parameters over on the right. Now, the engine we are going to use is DaVinci, which is, I think, the most common one. Um, Ada is another potential one that could work. Our response length here are the number of characters that uh, we're gonna have GPT-3 spit back. Since it's a one word answer, we can set this to 10 and feel comfortable. The temperature is the randomness, right? So 0.7, we're gonna get a little bit of a spicy GPT-3 answer. Uh, if you made it as a 0.1 or a zero, it's gonna be as straightforward as possible, but we want some magic since these words are not always gonna be as straightforward as you see in the prompts. The top P is again, uh, the diversity. We're gonna go ahead and make sure our frequency penalty and penalty presence penalty are set to one, which means hopefully the clue given will not be a repeat of any of the words in the answers or what it was primed with. And then we'll inject our stop sequence to let them know uh, to stop after it hits enter. So if we go here and let me move my bubble to the right. If we go here uh, and now we have everything set up and we hit submit, let's see what clue GPT-3 is going to give us uh, for thumb, forest, and color. All right, green, which I think is a pretty good one. You have a green thumb. Uh, forests are generally green, uh, made up a lot of trees, and color is obviously green. So not bad for GPT-3, uh, which is great. And notice how, again, we have these answers with the semicolon and this clue with uh, another semicolon. We're trying to generate this pattern so GPT-3 knows what to fill in, which you see here was exactly that, given the one word clue. Uh, and we got that as our spy master clue, which again, will convert into code uh, next. So if we head over to our API folder, we really have everything we need, again, from uh, Shreya, who has so kindly put together this amazing repo. And let's look at our demo web app file. And this is really building the front end of everything with, with flasks and using all the UI configs. Now we're going to make a couple of our own edits and changes to this file um, to make it work with uh, everything we're doing in this tutorial. So first thing we want to do is load the .env so we can reference our key in the .env file here. And really all that means is we're going to import uh, the load.env function and make sure we're calling uh, our OS as well. Now we don't need this config var. And what we're going to do here for the key name is actually, since we're using .env, we're going to do this go OS get env and call the open AI key. So what this is doing is going to get the key name by getting our environment variable, which is the open AI key, which we are exporting here. So really that's going to get the key name. And again, the reason we're saving it as .env is so we don't upload it and make our key publicly available if we were to, to put this on GitHub, which I will do. And then one of the last changes we need to make here is we don't need this line, let's just comment it out. And we don't need this line anymore, but instead what we're gonna do is set open AI key and just read in the key name. 
So we're setting this OpenAI key and reading in the key name. Now this is actually a variable which is referenced um, from this GPT-3 file and we're just gonna set it as the key. So what it's doing here is just setting and initializing this GPT-3 object which we'll need. Cool, so we have all this, let's save it. Great, and now we're ready to write our code for our code names uh, Spymaster Clue app. So let's create a new file in the root directory here and let's just call it codenames app.py. Uh, and let's actually drag it out of API so it's, yeah, so it's just at the, the root file of the GPT-3 sandbox. So what we're gonna do here is actually go look in this examples and we're gonna get a blank example here. And let's just copy over everything from the blank example into our empty code names app file. And we can go ahead and get rid of this, but we'll keep everything else uh, for now. And so step one is really initializing our GPT-3 object. And if you remember, we are calling the engine, which we're saying DaVinci, our temperature, we actually wanted the 0.7 and our max tokens were only 10. So the next thing we wanna do is the same way in our playground that we were priming GPT-3 is we wanna use this add example function to again, add all of those samples, uh, those examples we were using in the playground itself. And in the example variable, which again is in here, it is taking just an input and an output. So again, if we go back to our uh, code names app, right? The input is who are you? And the output is I am an example. And we're basically adding that to our GPT-3 object. So then it's gonna be primed and ready to use. So let's swap this out with our examples, which again, um, I'm pulling just directly from pulling these from what we used on the playground and we'll go through just to, to give you another reminder. So again, the input is the answers, right? Which are nut bark and the output is a clue, which is tree. And we went and added each of those four examples we had used in the playground. Uh, so the input is yarn, shoe, knit and stocking and the output is, is sock. Now, the one thing we're gonna wanna do here is we wanna set these new variables, uh, which we'll call question prefix, and that's gonna be answers with a space, and we wanna set answer prefix, and that's gonna be clue with the space. And, and what I why I'm doing this is because when we actually get to our web app, we don't wanna have the spy master or the user type in uh, clue um, or answers before it, we're just actually gonna have them type in the examples and we'll automatically append the question prefix and then in the answer, when it spits it back out, we'll make sure we're adding in the clue uh, as well. So then all we need to do here is actually add this to the GPT-3 object and we're not gonna append the output prefix to the query, so we'll set that e equal to false. And again, how do I know we need to add these? If you go back into our GPT-3 object and we look at our class, you see uh, these, this is everything we can technically pull through, which is exactly what we would have seen in the playground itself. Um, so rather than using the space and the input and the output, we're overriding it. This would have been the default. We're overriding it and telling it to use that answers and clue, which we had done in our playground. All right, so the last part we need to do is this UI config. So, um, Again, this is pre-made for us and, and what it's doing is basically how we want our web app, what we want it to look like. So let's actually head over to Safari and you see this is what our final um, output is going to look like. So we have a description, we have the placeholder text and we have the button. So if we go back here, we have the description which we're gonna just say use GPT-3 to dominate code names. The button text will be generate clue. And the placeholder is important because the placeholder is how we kind of tell the user what they need to do. So what's a good description? Add, so we want them to add each of their words separated by commas. They can add one, two, five, ten. 10. It doesn't really matter. 
uh, and we're actually not going to show the example form. Um, although actually we'll, we'll show it for now. We'll come back and uh, modify this later. So let's hit save. And from there, you'll see in this file, we're just calling that demo web app function. We're passing in our object and our config. And uh, it should go ahead and build this for us using all of this work that Shreya already had done for us. So let's head to our terminal and let's see what happens if we run the file. And looks like we need to run yarn install first. So it looks like I skipped a step. We need to run yarn install. I will go ahead and take this and also add it back into an earlier piece, but keep this here to make sure the flow works nicely. Okay, now that we have yarn installed, let's try running that again. And you're seeing it's going to kick us to our local host and launch a new web app. And like I mentioned, we have the ability to show the examples. So if you want, you don't have to add the examples in the code. You can actually go in and add them here. Um, we're just showing this so you can get a better understanding of what it is. I can delete these examples, but you see exactly how we had it laid out in the code. You can do it here through the UI. And here below is where I'm actually going to add my Spymaster words separated by commas. But let's go back to our Visual Studio code. And in our code names app, let's remove this show example, or let's just set it equal to false, right? And go back to our terminal. Let's pause this. And if we run it again, it will reload the page, this time not showing our examples. And here we have it, our web app. So let's test it out by giving it a three word clue. And there we have it, water. I think that's a great clue for octopus, fish, and ocean. And again, you can have this open while you run code names online. And there you have it, the best way to win at the game of code names. I'm Jabe Jabelson. This is Learn with Jabe. Thank you for tuning in. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Until next week, see you then.